Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. World leaders have condemned Sunday's riots in the Brazilian capital, which saw supporters of the former far-right leader Jair Bolsonaro storming key government sites. Spain's President Pedro Sánchez said the news of riots and storming of government buildings was a reminder that there is still a resurgence of extreme movements ready to tear down democracy around the world. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, tweeted, We condemn the attacks on Brazil's presidency, Congress and Supreme Court today. Using violence to attack democratic institutions is always unacceptable. While the U.K. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak denounced it as an attack on democracy. Police have now surrounded the camps in Brazil after supporters of the former president stormed government buildings in the capital. Brazil police took control of the country's presidential palace late on Sunday after supporters of the far-right former President Jair Bolsonaro invaded and defaced it. There were no immediate reports of deaths or injuries from their rampage, but the invaders left a trail of destruction, throwing furniture through the smashed windows of the Planalto Palace in Brasilia. The uprising, which lasted a little over three hours, underlined the severe polarization that still grips the country days after the inauguration of leftist President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, who defeated Bolsonaro in the October election. There are likely to be recriminations for those involved, including for Leonardo Indio Bolsonaro, the former President Jair Bolsonaro's nephew, here taking a selfie at the scene of the riots. And analysts say there are parallels between these scenes and those in the American capital on January the 6th. Unfortunately, it's a story that's quite familiar, certainly to Americans. Um, you have a quasi-authoritarian right-wing former president who doesn't accept an election result, in this case, Jair Bolsonaro, uh, who actually fled Brazil a couple of days before the, inaugura the inauguration on January 1st of President Lula da Silva. Uh, and today, his supporters tried a coup. They, they physically took over uh, the Congress, the Supreme Court, and the Brazilian equivalent of the White House. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva has declared a federal security intervention in Brasilia after the so-called invasion. In a speech given hours after the riots, he said the federal intervention in Brasilia will last until January the 31st. Da Silva also complained about a lack of security in the capital, saying authorities had allowed fascists to wreak havoc. Parts of northern India are experiencing a severe prolonged cold wave that has thrown normal life out of gear. Executive dense fog has delayed more than 100 flights and dozens of trains, causing chaos at airports and railway stations. Authorities in the capital Delhi have asked schools to extend winter holidays and cancel classes. Other northern states have also been grappling with an acute cold wave, with temperatures plummeting to minus 6 Celsius in Indian-administered Kashmir. Goldman Sachs will begin laying off thousands of employees starting on Wednesday as deal-making dries up across Wall Street amid global market volatility. According to one of the sources, the layoffs were expected to total just over 3,000, though the final figure was yet to be set. Bloomberg reported on Sunday that the financial firm would slash around 3,200 positions. That's as it prepares for a tough economic environment in the year ahead. Goldman's had 49,100 employees at the end of the third quarter. And the largest floating international book fair has docked at Egypt's canal city of Port Said, attracting book lovers of all ages. Visitors to Logos Hope are offered a selection of around 5,000 different titles across a wide range of subjects, from science, sports, arts, medicine and novels in both Arabic and English. The crew consists of 3,300 volunteers from 60 different nationalities. The ship, which visited Egypt for the first time in 2010, chose Port Said as its first destination in 2023 and will stay there until the 23rd of January. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.